Okay, so despite the fact that uh, the mesh export will be forthcoming in Gaia, it's not currently here. So I'm just going to talk to you quickly uh, about the other possibilities of trying to get your mesh out of Gaia and into another software and some main recommendations. So first off, even if your um, intended size or height is not meant to be up to the maximum, um, whenever exporting a height map that you're going to then use to um, drive any kind of other mesh in the future, you want to export sort of the uh, maximum settings. So you're going to want to go ahead and do something like an auto level in order to do that. And that's going to give you the maximum height out of it. But you then take that and you can determine your height of displacement later on. So in the alternative software be it Maya, ZBrush, World Machine, etc. Um, you can change the height over there. So um, I'll do that. I'll go ahead and export it. Save current. Um, call it tutorial export. And uh, or you can export like a 4K by doing the build terrain, change the uh, um, this is just a 512 that I'm doing because I want to do something very quick. But uh, you can um, change this value and then save current up to 2K, or you can change this value and go to 8K, and then in which case you have to use the build terrain. Um, and once you get that out, you can then go to your next piece of software. So let's say we're going to go to World Machine, and World Machine is probably the easiest. You go ahead and take your file. Um, which is under your generators file right here. Double click that and go ahead and load a train, whatever it may be, and say OK. Um, you can, uh, of course, um, adjust the altitude that's coming in, um, make changes with regards to height there as well. Um, then the mesh export, of course, you want to export using quads, uh, especially if you want to do any reduction or anything like that at a later point. Um, specify the output foil and just tell it where to go, wherever you want to save it to. And of course, make sure that your resolution is set up correctly. Um, if you want to do anything like subdivision rebuilds, so you want to bring it into ZBrush afterwards and kind of do reductions there, which is something that I often do. I'll bring in like a really high res mesh, say like a 4K into ZBrush, and then I'll do a reconstruct subdivs, which I'll show in a second. And um, that will uh, require that I keep this plus one on. And it's just because there's a difference between how different software calculates the subdivisions. Some of them would be like 512 edges, whereas other would be 512 faces and uh, that would offset by a value of one. And so this plus one, if you keep it on and export at 513, you're essentially getting a 512 face mesh, which then software like ZBrush can deal with. Um, so let's go to ZBrush next. So in ZBrush, um, if you're bringing in the mesh, uh, just to talk about that, you can do your reconstruct subdivs and continue to build down multiple meshes and then export at different resolutions as mesh. But that's if you've already had it as a mesh, so it's coming, say, out of World Machine or something. But if you have it coming in as just a height map, you need to do something about it. And so the alternative here is um, you have this little slider here that you can drag out, and one of them is uh, the plain 3D. Once you've done that and dragged it out, and gone into edit mode either by pressing T or clicking this button. You would then make it a poly mesh 3D because it won't be one by default. This will be a subdivision of 32 by 32. So that means that you're going to have to subdivide it a few times. So uh, now it's a 64, and now it's a 128, and a 256, and a 512. So now it's 512, it's ready to receive the information that I have. Just minimize that. Um, uh, you notice that it's rounded corners here and I don't want that so I'm just going to go back multiple times to get rid of that and you have this SMT which is smoothing. 
So instead you can divide it like this. So again, 64, uh, 128, 256, 512. And you notice that the corners haven't rounded. Um, then we can go into, um, this doesn't come with UVs automatically, so we'll have to create some UVs. And you can click on create, and then just uh, do a UV projection, a planar. Um, it's gonna use the angle that's here, and that will give it UVs. Um, I have to do it with the lowest level is active, it says. So just go back down to that lowest level. You could have done that before dividing it, I suppose. Um, so project that, there we go. And then I can go back up to the highest level. And um, that's only the starting point. Now we actually have to import the information in. So um, one way that I can do it is I can load it as a texture. So I could say new and then go ahead and um, you're not seeing it on the screen there, but just below this button is an import button. And um, we have displacement, there's my tutorial, that's got that there. And we can go to um, masking and mask by color and mask by intensity, which will mask that. We can turn that texture off. So we don't need it anymore, it's not been masked. And we can deform. And we can deform a number of ways. Um, I think a Y displacement will do me just fine. Um, Turn off polyframe here, see what it did. Just going to do this. So, yeah, one of these axes is correct. It's the Z. So in my particular case, it's the Z. And uh, 100 gives me that. Maybe I want more than that. Let's try 300. All right, and you can determine your, your height. Maybe 500 will be better. But uh, once you've got that, you can then, of course, export that mesh via export and you'll get an OBJ which you can then take into your other software. So let's go to the next piece of software and see what other options we have, which in this case is going to be Maya. Um, and every software has got something different. In this particular case, I've created a mesh at the polyplane. I made it sure that it was 512 subdivisions. In Maya, it's going to give you a warning and say, oh my god, are you sure you want to do this? You can say yes and uh, tell it not to freak out. Uh, we'll go to deform and of course we'll add a texture deformer. That texture deformer, of course, we have to go to the attributes one. It's got a strength in terms of how far it's going to push things. Uh, we'll go ahead and pick a file and it's going to load that once again from here. And you, this is going to depend on the scale of the object that you're using. So if I were to just go ahead and scale that out. So you can see just by scaling it out, that's more along the lines of what I had there. And it's exactly the same as the terrain. So um, this, of course, would become a lot more expensive if you made this, say, a 2K um, mesh that you're going to deform. When you select it, when you apply the deformer, etc., each one of those things is going to take some time to do. Um, and you're just going to have to sit and wait it out. But of course, it will produce the, uh, the mesh that you need. 
So these are all, of course, options that you can use in order to get the mesh across, but ultimately, um, once you have an actual mesh exporter, um, it will be ideal to just do it directly from Gaia, and then go in here and export a high res and a, say, a medium res, and then you can just bake a normal map inside of Maya. So baking the normal map would be for those of you that haven't done it before under rendering lighting and shading transfer maps you would select your low res and add that then select your high res and add that go with normal map tell it where to save choose your format tangent space is of course the kind that you want and then under the maya common output you would determine resolution and uh, bake out your normal map and so that's going to save that out to that location that you've defined and uh, you can apply that then to your low res and your low res will look like a much higher res which will render much nicer plus you can do other things like uh, um, add mash networks to add rocks or grass or other stuff like that to it or you could use um, uh, xgen would be another possibility etc so perhaps more on that on a, another video in the future, but those are a few of the ways that you can get your height maps uh, into uh, another software. So that's it.